Hey guys, and welcome to the 14th episode of the Fantastic Film Factory. In today's video, I'm going to build a massive mutated hand, create two awesome weapons for the monster project, apply bursted brain particles to the whole costume and much more. But above all that, today's the day where we're gonna finish building a monster. Let's start right where we left off in the last episode, distressing and weathering the outfit. But while the final painting coat is drying, we can focus on another important part of the sculpture. I am talking about the hands of the creature. Some of you might remember the video I uploaded about a year ago, where I built this prop right here, which is going to be the right hand of my creature. However, I definitely had to make a second hand for the left arm of my boy, and while I was at it, I thought, why not make this version giant and mutated? A valid question, I suppose. I made this bad boy the exact same way as I made its smaller brother, I just upscaled everything and ended up with this blank. Since the surface area of this hand is significantly bigger than the one of the smaller hand, adding veins and all that stuff we did with the right hand would have costed a huge amount of time. I needed a way to add texture to a large area quickly, so I decided to use spray foam for that as well. I used the foam to sculpt on certain hand profiles which should indicate tendons and knuckles. But once the film was dry, I bumped into another problem. Since the whole creature should end up being a wearable costume, I integrated this handle to hold and control the hand later on. Unfortunately, it is fully visible and too close to the ground to get covered by the sleeves of the coat. The simple solution for that was to just wrap some old cloth around the handle to keep the shape, and add another layer of cloth on top, which can now be glued shut and to the hand itself. Once that was done, I covered everything with a thick coat of foam, which completely hid the texture of the cloth and created a convincing transition between the upper and the lower section of the hand. Yep, definitely fits. To paint the hand, I created a muddy brownish mixture using wall paint as pigment and flour as a thickener. The thick mix will adhere much better to the foam than normal paint would. It was then applied to the entire hand as a first base layer. After the first coat was dry, the rest of the painting procedure was just a matter of imitating the painting steps that were done to the right hand in my other video. But I decided to add one specific feature only to the mutated hand. Since it's a body part, that is dragged through sludge and mud all the time, I took this bottle of fairly dark wood stain and applied it to the hand by using a sponge. This added a thin, gleaming coating that made the surface look like it's covered with wet dirt and mud. Some of the stain was also brushed onto the putties, since they had mud all over them as well. Now that the mutated hand was done, I continued by thinking about what to give my creature as weapons. I didn't want to go with guns, they are way too sophisticated for the style and look I'm going for with this sculpture. Instead, I wanted to give the weapons a really brutal and primitive appearance and therefore I found this really awesome looking root of a grapevine that will turn into a walking stick slash mace. Since I'm living in a fairly large wine growing area, these things are pretty easy to find here. The walking stick is of course mainly used by the monster to smash pitiable beings in the face, so I had to add a lot of ooze and gore to it. The ground substance for that is, who would have thought, more expanding foam. Some got also applied to the edges of the wooden warning sign on the base to make it go a bit better with the look of the costume. I also wanted to adjust the surface of the smaller hand to the mutated one we just made, so I put on some foam onto its surface as well. 
while I waited for the foam to dry, I mixed fake blood that I could apply to all the parts we just prepared with all that foam. This time, I used red varnish as main component, which made the blood appear much more fresh and wet than the mix that I used for the coat. If you haven't seen that episode yet, make sure to check it out, because it's kind of the first part to the video you are watching right now. The mix was then brushed onto the maze, the hand and the sign. In some places the bright foam was kind of shimmering through the paint, which I actually liked because it gave the spatters more optical depth. And again, you really got to keep in mind that actual and fresh looking fake blood will be applied to all the parts later on in this episode. In this shot you can also see really well how the technique I explained in the last episode that includes the glossy spray paint adds this extra contrast to the bloody surface. While the color that I applied to the sign, the mace and the hand was drying, I tried to work on another construction site of this project, which still is the base that the monster will stand on. I was just really unhappy with its look and I didn't have a good idea what I could do to enhance its appeal. But at least I could try. Some of you might remember this gas mask. I originally planned to apply it to the monster mask. But it never really convinced me as part of the face. So I had the idea to use it to make the base more dramatic and to add some more visual contrast to it. I also used these empty shotgun shells, which I found in the vineyards for the very same purpose. Obviously, the foam got some paint after it was dry. My very last attempt to complete the base, to my satisfaction, was to add a thin bright color layer on top of the darker tone of the foam to enhance the nature of its surface structure. And this finally gave me at least some relief with that thing. Although. I gotta admit that I'm still not 100% satisfied with the result. While I rummaged through the unfathomable depths of our summer house to find more useful stuff, I also found this incredible looking scythe, which virtually begs to be part of the sculpture. To make the attachment to the costume easier, I drilled a hole into the handle and inserted a screw eye. The scythe was then fixed to the costume by using this chain, which was actually brand new, but after I threw it into our fireplace, it got this natural, really nice looking patina. Despite that, I also had to work a bit more on the maze. It was way too short to also act as a walking stick, so I extended its overall length by using a second wooden stick and four strips of perforated steel tape. The joint got covered by leftover stripes of the white fitted sheet. To adjust their color to the wood, they got soaked in this watery paint mix. The last real building challenge was to find an easy solution on how to fix the head of the monster to the torso. It was really important to me that the mount was adjustable. Therefore, I used a plastic tube, wire and the leftover skull cap that was cut off the plastic skull in the monster mask making video. I cut off a long piece of wire and folded it a few times. The main part of it was then stuffed into the plastic tubing while the rest of the wire got connected to the skull cap. This created a useful metal spinal column which held the weight of the head quite nicely. Now it was finally time to assemble the almost finished sculpture bit by bit. I hung the mutated hand to the left arm using nylon strings, attached the right hand to the dummy by using a pipe coupling and gave the lonesome warrior its walking stick. All that was left to do now was to mix some fake blood using red and blue food coloring and liquid glue, brush it on all the intended spots and enjoy the view.
So yeah, that was the final video of this huge project on which I work for quite some time now. And I like the final look of it, but I probably like the fact that I'm finally done with it even more. Sometimes it cost like a lot of energy to keep on working on this project while it seemed like I wasn't making any progress at all. Anyways, in two weeks I'm gonna upload like a new video where I'm gonna sum up the whole building process from start to finish and also give you some more footage of the final sculpture. That being said, I really hope to see you then. Thank you very much for watching and remember to always stay creative.